friendship ended with cross stitch. Now Needlepoint is my new best friend. Okay, before you hit publish on that angry comment you are writing, obviously I exaggerate, but I've completed all of one Needlepoint project and I am super hyped. So today's video is basically just me gushing about it and I'll give some reasons why other cross stitchers might want to look into this too, because I am nothing if not a terrible enabler. So here we go. See, cross stitch is technically a type of embroidery and needlepoint is technically a type of embroidery and there are all these different types of embroidery out there. But it feels like often people start with cross stitch or whatever type it may be and then just sort of stick to that rut forever. Which is fine if you love it and you never ever feel the slightest urge to step out of it, you crack on. But for me, being able to do similar but different crafts that each have their own pros and cons and different best use cases is super fun. See being able to both knit and crochet for example. So that's part of why I was so excited to try Needlepoint, but there are a few other factors as well. First of all, I got peer pressured. <laughs> Shout out to Mary Ann before we go any further, because if she hadn't turned up in my DMs one day just out of the blue, we need to try this craft, I doubt I'd have ever got round to it. But my reasons to be excited apart from peer pressure. <laughs> the designs you see for Needlepoint are often more abstract rather than pictures of things, and it's a more organic, curvy kind of abstract rather than the strict squareness of cross stitch. Now I love abstract patterns just to look at, but also because I find that they're more freeing and kind of forgiving in a way. You can switch things up, change colours all you want, and it's not going to look like a mistake. Whereas sometimes if you're stitching a picture of something recognisable, there's only so far you can stray from the pattern before it starts to look wrong. Does this look wrong to you? Hopefully not, but it is full of changes from the original pattern just because I felt like it. Also, I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but just from looking at examples of Needlepoint on the internet, I kind of got the impression that it might be really easy. Which is by no means an insult, okay? I love to challenge myself as much as the next person, but sometimes I also like to zone out, watch Star Trek, and just work on something completely mindless. I think we all have days like that, right? The last big reason I was excited for this is because I thought I might be able to do a reasonable job of it on a budget. I have a tapestry needle. I technically could have used DMC threads if I couldn't find anywhere to sell me cotton pearl. I also have Q-snaps and of course my trusty Lowry stand. And I have that trolley needle for laying, which people told me would come in useful as well for needlepoint and they were not wrong. It's like transferable skills in a job situation, except in this case it's transferable craft accessories. You are supposed to use these stretcher bar things with needlepoint and that would absolutely have been better. I'll be getting some of those when I can. But to just try things out without spending more than necessary, I was able to sew the canvas to my Q-snap no problem. It wasn't the best tensioning and it definitely sagged more and more as the project went on, so trigger warning for real loose fabric shots coming up. I can't say it affected the stitching experience in a major way and it saved me money in case I ended up hating needlepoint after all. Oh, I do love saving money. <laughs> now, bearing in mind that I've only done this one project and it was by no means large nor complex, I'd have to say my instincts kind of seem to be right. The vast majority of the stitching was super easy, barely an inconvenience. The pattern I chose is actually supposed to turn into a ball, but I need to source some fabric to finish it off so you'll see the completed piece later. It's from a shop called Heartfelt Designs 1 on Etsy and I'll link it down in the description. The instructions for the most part were really clear, it took me through each stitch along with numbered diagrams to show me the exact positioning of the needle. Although there were a couple of exceptions where it was a little bit less clear, but I muddled through. These light green sections were the first to be stitched and the stitch in question is called Bargello. Now the pattern does give you a diagram of where to put these stitches, but it essentially just says do Bargello here. Being an absolute 100% newbie, I thought I could guess what that meant from the photos of it, but I thought I'd better look it up just to be sure. Which is how I found my way to Hello Bargello. Great website name, by the way. Learned how to pronounce Bargello, and also learned that it is as simple a stitch as it looks. So I got on with that, and immediately, even just with these first few stitches, I'd already planned the title and the thumbnail of this video. That is how quickly I was hooked. Now you might be thinking, but Michelle, cross stitch is also super easy. And yes, that's true, but it does involve a fair bit of counting. 
Whereas from the needlepoint patterns I looked at, they often tend to be along the same lines as this, which is if you get the first part right, everything else just kind of slots in in its own colour blocked section. That is a very different prospect to dealing with confetti in cross stitch. It was also a lot quicker to cover an area of fabric with a stitch like this, rather than cross stitching each individual square. Obviously I've just done this one, there are going to be way more complicated needlepoint patterns out there, maybe one day I'll change my tune. But for now I'm sticking with it, needlepoint is easier. I also just found it more interesting. Satisfying is probably more the word. Look at the variety of stitches in here. Now there is something uniquely satisfying about watching a cross stitch design come into being one tiny square at a time, I'm not going to deny that. But that does tend to be kind of all they are, it's just a series of squares with maybe some back stitch or even a french knot if you're feeling spicy. Getting to do all of these different kinds of stitches just made the project fly even more than it already was, it gave me something to look forward to at all times, and it meant things just didn't get repetitive and old towards the end. I will say there are plenty of needlepoint patterns that just use one stitch, Bargello stitch or tent stitch for example, but since those are so much faster than cross stitch, personally I think they probably still sound a bit more fun. Now all this sounds rosy and nice, but me being me, I did make plenty of mistakes and also discovered some things that I don't like so much about needlepoint. The main one in that latter group just being that it seems to be more awkward to start and finish your threads. Now it is possible I was doing it wrong. Because that central Bargello section was first, I looked up how people do it with that and the answer seemed to be the same as what I do in cross stitch, i.e. loop start where possible, weave the ends under existing stitches. Except this being my first time using cotton purl, I didn't realise how slippery that stuff is. It turns out you do have to weave it really far in order to get it anywhere near secure, whereas in cross stitch I'll often just go under about three threads and call it a day and it's fine. Once I moved on from that Bargello section and I didn't necessarily have easy ways to weave under the stitches, I just kind of made it up, I was tying knots left, right and centre. Probably there is a much better way and now that I know I love needlepoint I'll be looking up how to do it properly, but yeah, it just, I don't know, it felt like a lot more faff. One other thing I really disliked is how difficult it seems to be to just find solid info on needlepoint, and even now I'm not sure I'm using the right words for things. It was difficult to find mono canvas. It was actually quite difficult to find a pattern at first until I realised that what me and Marianne thought was called canvas work was in fact called needlepoint. I mean, maybe. I'm just saying words and hoping they make sense, although I will say thank you to everyone who linked me to useful resources last time I vented this frustration because they have helped quite a bit. I'll get there. It's just not quite as straightforward or as well covered a topic as I am used to. Mistakes mostly consisted of counting wrong. Yes, I just said this was easier because you don't have to count, but at the very start when I was absolute noob, I just wasn't quite used to how the stitches were displayed in the charts, that's all. It resulted in a few mistakes, but thankfully this cotton pearl thread is really easy to frog, so it was no big deal at all. Less of a mistake, more of a questionable choice I would say, is the way I decided to mix and match the variegated threads on these crescent stitches here. I don't like it, I think it looks weird. If I wasn't quite so lazy, I would probably pick those out and do them again. And again, not so much a mistake, more an experiment. Because I wasn't using the called for brand with these light green parts, I was kind of using a vibes based approach to how many strands I should use. In this triangle section here, I actually tried with both two strands and just one, then I decided I liked the one with one strand better and I had to unpick the section that used two. But this is what I meant about abstract patterns, you can kind of do whatever you want and it would have looked fine either way. I also made a change in the outside section here, there's supposed to be another little crescent stitch at one end of each section, but I thought it would just look better if the stars extended all the way to the end, so I did that instead, and nobody can stop me. The arrangement of colours did end up being quite different in my version versus the pattern, but that's whatever. At the start I really expected that I would get annoyed with the brown and I would rip it out and go shopping for something to replace it with, but once the ready variegated started to go in I actually started to quite like the colour scheme as a whole and I think it really works, especially given how limited the choices of cotton pearl were in my local shop. The only bit I didn't enjoy stitching was in fact these last few bits around the outside here. For some reason, after giving super detailed instruction on exactly what to do with my needle for all of the other stitches, the pattern sort of left me to draw the rest of the owl in terms of the lighter fill stitches in between the main stars. 
I mean, it did have a chart showing you where the stitches should go, but it didn't have the numbers to show what order you should do things in, and I really struggled to figure out how to do those without long carries of thread showing behind the canvas. I did bodge a solution, and it looks fine, but I don't think it's what I was supposed to do, I don't think it's what the designer probably intended, because it was very finicky, and it wasn't an enjoyable finish to the project. So, where am I even going with this video? I don't know. Obviously, I'm not abandoning cross stitch, nobody freak out. In fact, I've got an exciting new start planned for this coming Friday, Friday the 18th, for 24 hours of cross stitch. So watch this space. But this will definitely not be my last needle point. I've already got a shopping basket full of potential new patterns, but also, depending how well it goes when I actually try and turn this into a ball, I'm thinking I might stitch it again in two different colour schemes and use them for handy little presents. So any actual experienced needlepoint people who've somehow made it this far into the video are probably cringing so hard. But remember, I am completely new to this, so please be patient with me. <laughs> if you have any recommended resources or tips or advice on ways that I went horribly wrong, even though to my inexperienced eye this looks good, please do let me know. I would honestly love to be educated down in the comments. And if there's anyone watching who's looked at the occasional pattern like this and thought, hmm, Honestly, I'd encourage you to just do it. It is so much fun. And if you're already a cross-stitcher, apart from anything else, I can almost guarantee that you will be won over by how much faster it is. Okay, I've got no idea how to end this, so I will just say thank you as always to my supporters over on Kofi, and especially to the Stitch Squad. Mary Ann Johnson, Sunny, Candy Riley Pettinger, Laura Salatz, Enlightened Flamingo, Cross-Stitch the Globe, I'd Rather Be Stitching, Angela Sue Harrison, Emily Hobbs, Lee the Cozy Crafter, Asta Vinka, Callie Jenny, Sarah, Angela Wells, Enraged Flamingo, and Kaylin. I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff. Bye!